Tonight, Haunt Me goes up to the state capitol to investigate the former home of Governor John Fremont Hill, where it is said that two spirits of separated lovers still roam the halls and search for each other. Is it haunted or not? Come with us and find out. Welcome to Haunt Me. here at our home state's capital city at the historic Governor Hill's Mansion here in Augusta. This lavish home was constructed in 1902 by architect John Calvin Stevens and is still preserved to this day. A number of paranormal stories have accumulated over the years, including those of a lady in white and a man in black. We're looking forward to exploring and hope we can make contact with some of the entities here tonight. Hi, welcome to the Governor Hill Mansion. I'm Elaine. I'm Ashley. I'm Ty. Hi, Ty. I'm Carol. Hi, nice Carol. To meet you. Nice Katie to meet will be you. joining us later. Okay. Thanks for having us here. We're so excited. My name is Elaine Sonia, and I've been working here for about 27 years. We do everything from wedding receptions, wedding ceremonies, a lot of state seminars, government seminars, any type of reception we will do. Wow. Whoa. This is the front foyer. Ooh. Everything's original as it was back in 1901. Really? Governor John Hill, who was governor from 1901 to 1904, he didn't care for the Blaine House, so he decided to build his own. Do you think that Governor Hill's spirit is still here? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's uh, the nanny and the horseman. People who would spend the night here would see a lady in white. By what she's wearing, I'm thinking she may have been the nanny. Every now and then I'll have somebody come to my office and say, there's a strange lady in white out in the stairway, do you know who it is? Does she react to anybody? No, she doesn't. No. Okay, nope. that's good to know. Does she, when she gets to the bottom of the stairs, does she just disappear? Just disappears. Wow. Have you witnessed oh. her dematerialize? Yes. Oh, yes. wow. So we should yep. definitely have a camera on this area all night long. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you said that there's a certain time of night that it specifically happens. It usually seems to be between 6 and 8 p.m. Okay, okay so. pretty early. Yeah. Well, we're gonna be ending our walkthrough at around 6, so maybe we'll end here. Yes, just chill and wait. What happens in here, room 205? Well, we try to rent it out, but we can't keep any tenants. When the Oblate missionaries had the house and they used to have overnight retreats every weekend, even though the house was full, no one ever wanted to sleep in that room. So you mentioned something about a child, right? Catholic Charities employees hear a child laughing and running around often. I've heard footsteps running and laughter when I know there's nobody else in the building. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not sure if any of the servants actually had children here. I don't believe so. I know that the Hill children grew up and moved out of the house, so I don't know whose child this is. That could be something connected to the land. It could be something connected to the nanny. I don't know. Catholic Charities, who are here all week, they are continuously calling my husband, who does the maintenance, that they think there's somebody hiding up in the attic because they hear running in footsteps. So he's constantly having to go up to the attic to assure them that there is nobody up there. Wow. That's good to know. But it's a, that's a couple of times a week it happens. Really? Then we should definitely have a recorder or something up there. Yeah, maybe leave solitary. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This mansion in particular lends itself to solitary. It's very, very large. There's a lot of different spaces that have stories and entities attached to it. So we can split really easily without causing noise contamination. Apparently a lot of servants stayed in here that were hidden from Japanese internment camps. Mm -hmm. So they... Oh my gosh. So this and the attic that we just came through? Yeah, is where those servants live. I can't imagine all of those servants hiding out up here. I mean, I mean you wouldn't even huge. know there's like a bunch of people hiding up here. Right. There's so much space for them, but this is the first area that we've been in so far that I don't feel comfortable. It like, has a really strange feeling. I feel sick in here. I don't know. I want to scan through that area with the K2 just to see if there's any sort of electricity that could be causing that. But that was the area that I felt the strangest. This is Columbus Hall. This is, this is the large banquet hall. This room was added on in 1967. If it's added on, do you guys get paranormal activity here too? Has it yes. extended? People who don't have any idea of of what's going on. They'll often come to my office and say, we just had a strange man walk through our meeting. And of course, I think I know what's going on, so I'll, I'll go looking for him, but of course I never find him. But it's always, they describe the man in black. I think because this area, of course, was all open field, which connected to the Kara's house and the stable. Okay. And this would be the path he would take 
with the horses and the carriage. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So he's never seen in the main house. That never seen in the sense. main house. So you believe him to be Mrs. Hill's brother? Yes. Okay. Yes, she would. He would contact her. I guess he was kind of a philanderer, and when he ran out of money, he would contact her, and she would have him come here and work. Mm -hmm. I've heard over the years from history buffs that Mrs. Hill's brother, who used to come here when he needed some money and she would put him to work as her horseman, and it was known that he and the nanny were having an affair. So the ghosts could be past couples that are still... They were buried together. And they also buried together. Nearby like cemetery. Story. That added I a whole new that. element to this. This is awesome. Maybe yeah. he's coming back and forth to see her. I don't know, I just made that up in my mind. It turns out, um, there was an affair, they were in love. It means a lot to me. I just, I, my heart melted. Maybe she's coming down the stairs to meet him walking across the lawn. Maybe that's why it's residual. Maybe it's dinner time. I don't know, but I just think they weren't done. I can't wait to spend the rest of the night here. So thank you so much for having thank us. Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll set up a camera on the stairway to see if we can capture anything. Sure. Yeah, thank you, absolutely. you were great. I think that it's important when you do a lot of research on a place to not let that color your expectations too much. I can't go forward expecting to see the lady in white at eight o'clock. I can't go forward expecting to hear a child. I have to open my mind and knowing those stories can help me to formulate a plan with the others on the team, but I can't go in and I shouldn't go in expecting certain things to happen. That's when you do that, you start to become biased toward evidence. You can kind of make things out of nothing, which is really dangerous to do. After going through Governor Hill Mansion with Elaine and hearing her stories and the stories of other people who have been through the building, we're thinking it's going to be a pretty low pre-rate score. Especially since we have no actual evidence, even though many people have experienced the Lady in White and the Horseman, they've experienced the footsteps and the lights being turned off, nobody's actually caught any of this on film or camera. The Lady in White and the Man in Black are rooted in history. There is evidence that points to them being real people. They're buried in a cemetery near here. So that's gonna cause us to bump the score up to three. One of the coolest things about ghost hunting is that you can't turn it on and off. It's happening with or without you. I'm talking to the lady in white. Um, are you able to walk down the stairs towards us? So what just happened is we were on break after the walkthrough and we were just in there talking and we're getting ready to go to the store to get dinner and as soon as we came around the corner, Ty was in front and he saw the K2 blinking on stairway and it had gone up to red and as soon as we came out it stopped. We kind of waited and we asked some questions, let her know who we were. Um, we didn't get a response but we were, we were kind of hopeful. We still are hopeful. I'm wondering if our presence alarmed you. We can go away. We're going to be leaving this house for a little while so we can grab some food. We have begun the investigation. Uh, we decided to put Katie's altar here in the gold room, which is the dining hall. We're specifically seeking any spirits who can understand us right now. We have reason to believe that there are some spirits who are unaware of our presence, and if you know anything about them, we're hoping that you can give us more information. In the meantime, can you guys walk me up to the attic so I can drop this off? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. I haven't been through the house yet, so oh, really? yeah. We started out just kind of going through the different areas and showing Katie some of what she had missed during the walkthrough. Wow, this is a great apartment. Lots of closet space. Katie, you should tell them that you're down. Yeah, if it wasn't in a gut. <gasps> I've got orange. Really? Electrical wise? Um, give me a flashlight. Here you go. What is it? Let me hit the other side, Katie. Oh, it's here. Um, other side is the fuse box. It's a fuse box? Yep. That would make sense. You still here? Oh, sorry guys. No, you're fine. 
It's just the obelisk. <laughs> the obelisk is a device that has a dictionary of words saved in it. When something triggers it, it will pull up a word. There were times throughout the night that the words did seem to line up in some way with what we were talking about. But the problem with the obelisk is that for every answer that's in the ballpark of what you're thinking of, you're gonna get some random word like apple. It, the weird thing was it was talking then it stopped. And it's in the mode where it's like free to talk as it needs. Hello? Is there somebody out here in this hallway? I'm gonna keep asking him to color my shirt and that stuff because I wanted to. What was that? A fair. Oh my god. It just said a fair. It just English. said a fair. Are you the coachman or do you know the coachman? I think the affair is pretty interesting. Okay. So there's an affair. Um thing, yeah, okay. That was a You guys had a thing. <laughs> Love it. Oh climb. Climb the highest mountain. Oh, she climbs the stairs to see you. Some of the words we were getting tonight did sort of relate to the idea of the relationship between the lady in white and the man in black. A couple of the words we got were affair, loving, climb, especially when we were talking about the stairs and how she is on the stairs. Oh. Some of this stuff is just like... I know, it is like you can totally throw some of that away, but I just think the affair and the loving is really weird. Okay, recorder, I'm coming upstairs. Ignore any footsteps. As a best practice, it's not good to do solitary if you're not comfortable in your practice and you're not comfortable in the location. Here tonight, based on the claims we've heard so far, I think it's gonna be okay. In fact, I think it's gonna work out really well to our favor. Recording, I'm gonna just turn my flashlight off, sit here in the dark with you, with the story from Elaine that there were Japanese immigrants that were hiding in the attic from the internment camps, definitely one of the tactics that we wanted to do, to do tonight was to speak their language. Watashi wa tai des. Watashi wa tai des. Ottawa? Sorry about my poor Japanese, I know very little. Know how to say cake. Cakey? There were creaks, which could be the house, but the, there were definite footsteps and sounds of stuff moving around. Perhaps they don't speak English um, as a first language. Perhaps they don't feel comfortable speaking it at all. Are you scared? Lonely? Happy? Relieved? I'm looking for the man in black, the horseman. I'm gonna talk to him, but my gut feeling is that he comes and goes when he wants because we think it might be residual. So he might not react, he might. And there could be others here that could be reacting to me too, so. Um, all right. Um, I put my machine, call it a K2 meter. Again, I put that in the middle of the room. So if you don't want to get near us, you can walk right up and let us know you're there without getting close. I just went to red. Did it? Yeah. Is it blipping? No, I can't make it blip again. It was just a fraction of a second though. Nothing concrete. When you're in an, a, a residual haunt, it's basically like the movie's playing out in front of you and you're there spectating. So that's what we were doing tonight. We are coming into your secret space. We know that it's a secret. We are not gonna tell anybody about this space. We went into the little like secret apartment where um, the Japanese immigrants were um, living. 
and we were just like trying to be really warm and trying to be really welcoming so that they weren't very like scared. We'll just set this here. Um, I really feel like we have to build trust with them. I do too. Um, I'm sorry if we're in your space. We don't mean to intrude on you and we're not gonna tell anyone that you're here. We're not here to hurt you or to take you away from your family. We want to help if we can. We're not associated with the people who did this to you. Thumps. Yeah, listen. What is that? What the hell? That could be heat. Okay. Like tick, tick, ticking. Oh my god, intense headache. Ooh. Yeah. Like piercing through one yeah, spot. I have it too. <sighs> nope, I don't want that. I'm sorry. When we first went into the attic apartment, that sort of crawl space area, it felt really bad. I got a headache as soon as we were in there. I know Katie got some shoulder pain and also got a headache, and it just felt really bad. I ended up moving to the middle of the room because I didn't even want to be touching the wall. We're not here to make things worse for you. If anything, we're here to release you. You don't have to stay here. This isn't your home anymore. We can help you. You can go. You don't have to hide anymore. What was that scream? That was a scream. Oh my God. <laughs> what was that? That was a legit scream. I, in my mind was trying to justify it as Ty. Yeah. But at the same time, Ty's not a screamer. Well, he can sometimes, depends on what happens to him. <laughs> yeah, he can. Okay, okay. We'll ask them if anyone screamed. That was Definitely. loud. That if was they're, loud. If they're down in the banquet hall, and we heard that's so far <laughs> away from where we are right now. Okay, so a really great way for us to hear you right now, we can ask you questions that you would answer yes or no to. If you say yes, you go like this. Sorry, wait, let's do this again. That was a weak knock. If you say yes, go like this. If you say no, go like this. Is that clear? I just heard that. So yes. that was a yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's exactly why we do this, perfect. Okay, so do you, do you want us to help you get out of here? I ended up kind of doing like a knock once for yes, twice for no or whatever, and we got one knock. I was like, is this clear? We got one knock for yes that they got, that they understood the rules of like this communication. Never answered any questions though. I want you to know that you all have the power to get out of here. You don't need another person to help you, as much as that might seem untrue. It's a different year now, and you are free to go. There's no one that's gonna keep you from leaving. She's right. So we were just kind of trying to connect with them on that sort of level, and we're just talking about how hard that must be and how we were very sorry that it happened to them. The energy in the room just lightened and our headaches went away. It was almost like whatever was there was just happy to have someone connect with them. Did one of you scream a little while ago? Like a half hour ago? No. no. Well, okay, well we heard a perfect scream at 11.57 p.m. No, me and Carol have been in the banquet hall the whole time. The whole time. What did you guys get, anything? You heard a kerfuffle. Okay. I got a knock response, I just one, but. You guys think you caught the scream on the recorders? Yeah. Oh, well, we all heard it with our ears, too. Great. Carol's gonna do some time in the banquet hall. Okay. Town. It just felt like something was in there and we weren't getting the results that we wanted. Granted, the horseman is probably residual and so I don't expect a lot of interaction, but it just felt like something else was there as well. So I decided to go back and do solitary. I just want to try to comfort them, let them know why I'm here, what I'm doing, and I'm not here to hurt them or bother them or anything. My name is Carol, if I hadn't said that already. I don't know your name. I heard that Mrs. Hill's brother walks through here. 
you come and stay here for a while and do some work? I was sitting in a chair, and every time I would ask a question, I would hear shuffling. And at first it was constant, and then it stopped, and then it was here and there. Finally, I just, I just felt like I needed to ask if there were any children in the room. Are there any little kids in here? Are there any little kids in here? Ty, if you don't pick this shuffling up when you record, I'm gonna flip out. All right, if anyone's here with us, I'm gonna spread out the cards again. I'm just gonna shuffle them. I'm here this time. Come on down, Lady in White. So, maybe we should ask a specific question and yeah. draw a card. Do you have a question, Ty? Yeah. What's your question? If this house is limbo, what would someone like us need to do to help the people here? It's like lovers that have been, it's inverted again. It's, this is like a, a happy meeting of lovers, but it's been delayed. We have to like reunite the lovers. Get on it, Katie. All right, going in. You're going in? Do you just talk out loud, or what do we need to do? I don't have to do anything. We're just gonna sit and support her. In my meditations, I have kind of discovered one of my guides, and we are able to actually go back and forth within a conversation with each other. And um, I've come to find out that her name is Asha. She helps me validate. So when I see a spirit, it's really challenging for me personally because you know, you, a lot of thoughts go through your head. You're like, am I crazy? Am I actually seeing this? Is this real? Especially when nobody else is seeing it, there is something about having that validation. And so I will meditate and I will just like clear my mind and I will ask her questions. It's still, it's with Carol. So it's in the banquet hall? Is Carol? What is all that thumping? Is that them in the mission control? My stomach just gurgled it's a little bit. It's not that. It's watching Carol, she said. Because I just asked if Carol was safe. It makes me very uncomfortable. That makes me very uncomfortable. Hello? Was that you? I do think we need to go check on Carol. Okay. I feel okay. uncomfortable that it's like with her and watching her. Turns out that Asha was seeing like a blobish figure that was about the size of a child next to Carol. And because it's so thick and dark, it has like a dark energy about it. And so we weren't really willing to risk just leaving Carol with it as an experiment. And so that's when we rushed to help her. Holy shit. What? It was in the right corner. And then when I asked about it, if it was a child making the noise, mm -hmm. it definitely was in the left corner. So I'm like, well, that's not the kitchen. While there was noise in front of me, I felt something behind me watching me. We did a tarot reading on the second floor. Yeah, like I started meditating with the intent of figuring out how to repair this relationship. But before I even got to that question, she said it was in here watching you. I don't want to say 100% it's a residual haunt. I do believe there's things in here that we could interact with, but we probably have to be here a lot more, have to be here on a constant basis. I think most of it is residual. Um, some questionable sounds, a few K2 hits that may or may not have been anything. Katie and I did hear a scream when we were up in the attic. We had a couple possible hits on the ovelis, 
And Carol heard some shuffling noises when she was in solitary at the same time as when Katie sensed that Carol may be in danger. Now, a lot of these are personal experiences or some of the sound could have been explained away by various other factors. So because of this, we are going to rate the Governor Hill Mansion a three. Averaging this with the pre-rate score of three gives us a three, a fifth level haunt. <laughs> 